Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to take a look at the online web app, Photopea, which is kind of a online image editor akin to something like GIMP or Photoshop. Um, it doesn't quite have all the features of those applications, though clearly by looking at the interface it's been heavily inspired by what they've got going on there. I consider that to be a generally good thing because those would be my apps of choice. Uh, so if we look at the interface, what do we got going on here? We have tools over here, including magic wand. I consider that very important. Rectangle select, um, eclipse select, text tools, paint bucket, good stuff. Um, over here on the right, you can see that even though it's an online editor, it does support layers. I consider that to be very important as well. And uh, kind of in line with what you would see out of GIMP as a desktop application, you have some uh, filters that you can add to your document. Not nearly as many, of course. Um, I think when it comes to a web app, it's kind of hard to expect the same level of features, at least currently. But I think overall what's going on here is pretty cool. If you look down here at the bottom right, you'll also notice it's possible to add masks inside of Photopea. And in the view menu, we can also see guides and rulers. Now, although it's not too hard to work with Photopea, I have noticed it does feel a little bit clunky. So if you try to, like for instance, you try to drag on this menu bar, you can see a little bit of flickering up there in the screen, and it doesn't immediately update. So because it's a web app, partially, um, there does seem to be a little bit of interface lag. Okay, so here this is pretty nice. Um, much like Photoshop, you have access to a lot of different brushes. Obviously, you're not always going to want it to be that solid brush stroke. So over here, one that fades off as it gets to the edges to create a blur effect. That's fairly useful. And here's a pretty strange one down here at the bottom. The one that says 149, we can apply it. But you will notice it doesn't apply seamlessly. You can definitely see where the um, marker fails to blend together. And if I try to do it all in one stroke, it just doesn't respond immediately. Um, that's not too bad of a thing, but it's definitely noticeable. So let's zoom out a little bit and uh, maybe add a completely new layer on top of all this um, basically random junk there. I'll just create a new background color. We'll go to the paint bucket. Select a color from the color picker. Note that you do have to hit OK. I'd probably prefer personally if it automatically updated once you select the color, but hey, minor thing. So we change that to a solid color, maybe a slightly less vibrant one. And now we could add some text to it. So, Fertopia introduction. Let's go with that. Increase the size to something kind of higher. Okay, should probably go higher than uh, 60 pixels there. Let's type it in manually. You can, of course, do that, and that's fine. And we'll change the color on this. You do seem to have access to a truckload of fonts in Photopea, and that's pretty nice. I'm guessing it's using Google Fonts or something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, you definitely don't have to go and install fonts in your local computer because it's a web app. With this warp menu up at the top, you can apply arcs to your text, which is pretty nice. We'll go ahead and add a bend here. Hit OK. But one thing that's a little bit annoying is that um, your text can't move until you rasterize it for some reason. Unless I'm missing something here. You have to right click on your text, go to rasterize, and move it. And if you do that... It also cuts off any text that wasn't on the screen. So that may become a little bit of a problem. You have to be careful about your, um, your placement of your text and how big you're going to make the text before you actually rasterize it. Or you can just get it in the perfect spot to begin with. But either way, that's a little bit of a minor issue there. So I've rasterized the text again, and now we can move it. As long as all the text was on screen before, it moves just fine. One more cool thing about Photopea is that you can open and export PSD files, which is a Photoshop document file. So if for some reason you ever get a Photoshop document file and you're told to go ahead and open it, but you don't have Photoshop, then Photopea would be pretty useful for that. Um, beyond that, I would say that if you're on a public computer, this might be a good quick solution to just doing some quick image edits. 
But ultimately, my first impression is that GIMP is going to be a more solid tool. It's been around for a lot of time. It's more responsive and it has more features. But it's kind of hard to compare a desktop application to a web app because web apps almost never have as many features as those desktop apps. So if you're just looking for an online editor to go ahead and edit some images, give Photopea a try at photopea.com. It's completely free. And uh, I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my future videos.